Hello, I'm Lois Joseph. One King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands visited the island of Sewa in 2013. I was lucky enough to perform the maple dance for him. I had great fun that day, so I decided to find out how the maple dance became part of Seba's culture. My first step was to talk to Mrs. Carmen Simmons. What does the maple dance mean to you? It means a lot. I love it, I enjoy it, and uh, for many years, and I started at the age of 14, so it's a part of me. How did the maple dance come to Seba? Well, the first time I can remember ever seeing the maple dance was, I think, 1944, when we first started it. It was taught to us by um, an old lady. She was the first registered nurse there in Seba, and she was taught in St. Kitts. She went to school there for nursing. And I think there she learned how to plow the river. You know, 1944, Holland was free from the war. It was the Queen's birthday, and they wanted to do something, the government, as you know, something for the first time, for her first birthday. I think that she was friends with the governor's wife, and the governor's wife wanted something special, something different. And then I think she spoke it with her, and then she said, well, it would be nice for the maple dance. Well, I was one of the, one of the girls who danced at the age of 14. Have you seen her anywhere else? No, no. I, at the age of 14, I'd never been any place. I was more in Sabre. Mm. So I never see it nowhere else. Only that time when we all danced it. Why did you revive the maple dance? 19, 1963, I started a um, cultural group on Sabre. So we had to find something for them to do. So then we had dance groups, we had singing groups, we had drama groups, and that's the way how we started. You know, and then we come up with, well, let's do the maple dance. Yeah. So the teenagers, they did a maple dance, and mm -hmm. it was enjoyable. Everybody liked it because something new, even though when my daughter did it for the first time, everybody was happy to see it in Seba. Because some people had never seen it. What type of music did you dance to? I know it was a waltz played. And I think it was, um, in those days, you only play guitar music. So I think it was played on good guitar music. Okay. As far as I could remember. Because there wasn't nothing much otherwise. And then they were singing, yeah, because he sang the song, Away to the maple eye, to crown our lovely queen. And we trip and trip and trip and trip it and trip it on the green. What clothing did you wear? Did you make it yourself? When I started, it was white dress. Oh. But when I started to do it, for the children, I started with a skirt. A skirt? Yes, and a white blouse. Everybody had a white blouse, and then he had the skirt of the color of the ribbon. So we have the red, the white, and the blue, and the orange, representing the House of Orange. Okay. So that's what, you know, celebrating for the Queen's birthday. And then we kept it as a tradition, those colors. So from when you did it, how did it get passed on? So after I, um, you know, I, I had drama and so much, everything, then I decided I was getting old and I couldn't. So I'd keep some things and my daughter's day would have to the other. So then Anastasia, she the one took it over from me. Mm. Because she had a teenage group. And afterwards, then Bali said she would help her. And then she took it over, and in the end, the teenage, teenage people wasn't too much interested anymore. And then Miranda said she would do it with the school children. So that's how come Miranda got involved with the school children. Jump out of my bed, babies, I hold of my head, darling, because of the joke, because she lives in a small. And you should hear a rock sing when they light up. I 
My next step was to talk to Miranda Simmons, who was my maple dance teacher. When was the first time you saw the maple? The first time I saw the maple was when I was a teenager. I came back from away, going to school, and my sister was there doing the maple with some kids at the Sunny Valley Youth Center, and I liked it, and I also wanted to be part of it. So I got a chance to do the maple that day. Did you like it? The first time I tried the maple, I enjoyed it. We had to go in and out, in and out. But we got tangled a little bit, but then still it was fun. Because um, when you're doing the maple, you learn to count and you also socialize with your friends and everybody helps each other out. Why did you decide to take it over? The reason why I took over the maple dance is because first my mother did it, then my sister Anastasia, and then my sister Volley did it. But then her job became very um, busy, so she didn't really have time out to, do, to practice the maple dance. And I find that the maple dance is part of our culture. Kids love to move, kids love to have fun. And it's something that, like I said, is all something that I find all Sabre kids should learn. And also the kids look forward to doing the maple dance. When coming to grade two, they know, mm, we're gonna do the maple dance, we're gonna perform the maple dance. So I like that they like that um, it's part of our culture. Where did you perform the dance? We performed the maple dance like by the old home because the elderly enjoy the maple dance because they remember it in their days doing the maple dance and also doing a waltz. So they really enjoyed the maple dance. So we perform it at the um, home of the elderly. We also perform it for um, assembly because that is the time the kids get to practice in front of the other younger, the other children. And also we perform it on special occasions like when we have Saber Day coming up. We perform it for pre-Saber Day activities at school and also we, we perform it for Saber Day for all the rest of the parents. And also, when, if there's any big special occasion, we perform it. Like when the king came, your class and you yeah. were the one who got to perform it for the king. And they really enjoyed it. To help keep the maple dance tradition alive, the Child Focus Foundation invited dance instructor Carla Reyes to present a workshop on different dance techniques. Maple is done everywhere. It's, you know, it started off in Europe, but when the dance came to the Caribbean, and the Caribbean people took it over and gave it their own Caribbean flavor. You change the music, you change a couple of steps, you add your hips, you add your waist, you, know, you add a bounce to it. Yeah. And you make it your own Caribbean maple. Pass each other, back, and then you turn. I love the maple because it, it brings a community together. Like really you have to, you depend on other people. You have to, you're, you're not an individual, you're part of a big collective. You know, it's really a community building experience. You work with people, you, you have to communicate, you have to relate, you have to do really a group team building activity. So I think it's a great way to uh, pull people together again and do something community. There's no set particular step to the maple. It's more about the weaving pattern. So you can create choreography, you can uh, you know change directions, or you can you can create nice routines with it, and it can be to a music of your choice. You know, I, I would imagine for young, for the older folks, they'd love to hear the string band music, which gives it like the traditional element. You feel like, okay, this is something classical and traditional. But sometimes, you know, young people want to switch it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And like today I gave an example where I use a variety of different music. So you can, you can uh, use, you know, 
folk music, you can use soca music, and if you want to challenge yourself and challenge the elders, you can use hip hop music <laughs> and really cause a revolution, <laughs> you know? But really and truly, you know, the principle of the maypole is more of the coming together, the community. So if you can find the music that most inspires you mm -hmm. and really work out something, you know, interesting, for young people, you know, to make them feel like, yeah, I want to do this maple, but you know, I really like that song so much. You know, I want to try my own little music. One of the things you have to be very, how you say, uh, aware of, is that sometimes, you know, people want to hold on to something and they don't, they don't want to change it. Mm -hmm. But then young people feel like left out because they're experiencing something new. So sometimes you have to let culture evolve. And because culture is not static, it's very dynamic, and young people want to feel that they can contribute to it as well. So yes, you want to honor the traditions of your elders and your past. You definitely want to honor those framework, but you also want to create a space to let the dance grow and evolve as the community grows and evolves. So basically, um, I would imagine now that you all have been given all these tools to work with, it will free you up to always maintain and do the maypole, but guess what? make it new and exciting and something that you all can relate to and then it evolves as the community evolves. I'm glad I've got the opportunity to learn the maple dance and it's very nice to see the younger children are having fun dancing it. So it looks like the tradition will carry on on Seba. Because of the joke